Lesson 5. Properties of Exponents We can think of multiplication as shorthand for repeated addition. For example, 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 3 times 2. Likewise, we use exponents as the shorthand to represent repeated multiplication. For example, 2 times 2 times 2 can be written as 2 to the third power. In this case, 2 is called the base and 3 is called the exponent. We will remark that these shorthand expressions only make sense for multiplying by natural numbers or taking a number to the power of a natural number. However, all of our properties for multiplication and exponents actually apply to all real numbers. Our first property of exponents states that a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. As an example, 2 to the 2 times 2 to the 3 equals 4 times 8, which equals 32, which is 2 to the 5. To prove this property, we note that we can write a to the m times a to the n as a multiplied m times times a multiplied n times, using the definition of exponent that we gave. Using the associative property, this is just a multiplied m plus n times, which is equal to a to the power m plus n. For our second property, we have a to the m to the n equal to a to the m times n. For example, 2 to the 2 to the 3 equals 4 to the 3, which equals 64, which is just 2 to the 6. To prove this, we begin with the left side and expand a to the m. Using the definition of exponent again, we have this multiplied by itself n times. All of this is equal to a multiplied m times n times by associativity. This is equal to a to the m times n by our definition of exponent. For our third property of exponents, we have a times b to the n equals a to the n times b to the n. For example, 2 to the 2 times 3 to the 2 equals 4 times 9, which is 36, which equals 6 to the 2. To see this, we start with the left side and expand this to a b multiplied by itself n times using the definition of exponent. We can then remove the parentheses by the associative property. Using commutativity, we can put all the a terms to the front and the b terms to the back. Finally, we use the definition of exponent to finish the proof. Now we want to extend our definition of exponent to the whole numbers by defining a to the zeroth power for non-zero numbers. For this, we can multiply a to the zero by one, which is equal to a times its multiplicative inverse. Then we can use associativity in the fact that a is equal to a to the one. Applying our first rule of exponents, this is equal to a to the zero plus one, which is just one. Again, a to the one is equal to a, so we can multiply it by the inverse of a to get one. We can extend the definition of exponents further to the negative integers by defining a to the negative one. Again, a must be non-zero. Starting with a to the negative one, we can multiply it by one again, which is equal to a times its inverse. Then we apply associativity to group the first two terms. Since a equals a to the one, we have a to the negative one plus one by our first rule of exponents. This exponent, of course, is equal to zero, and a to the zero is one by our last property. These are five properties that we want to highlight. We could add several others, like these. However, memorizing too many rules tends to reduce focus, and these other properties can easily be derived by using the five that we have given. This concludes the lesson.